Previously, we learned that the origin of language gave rise to several theories. While some attributed the human ability to speak to a divine gift, such as God in biblical tradition, Allah in Islam, and Saraswati in Hinduism, others speculated that early humans did not initially know how to speak. Instead, they may have formed their first words by imitating sounds they heard in their environment. For some, the first words did not emerge through imitation, but rather from emotional cries, such as those of pain or other strong feelings. Others proposed that early humans initially communicated through melodies and rhythms. Over time, as their need for communication and collaboration grew, these hums and melodies evolved into structured speech. I have listed the names of these theories on the board. Today, just like before, Ferris and I will learn with Grandpa about additional theories regarding the origin of language. Specifically, we will explore four more theories. The physical adaptation theory, the social interaction theory, the tool making theory, and the genetic source theory. Grandpa, while browsing the internet for theories on the origin of language, we came across one that suggests humans develop the ability to speak due to physical changes in their bodies. What's your take on this theory? And what can you tell us about it? Ferris, my boy, that's an interesting question you've asked. The origins of language have puzzled scholars for centuries, and while there are many theories, not all of them sit well with me. One of these is the physical adaptation theory. Now, although I don't support it because it has its shortcomings, let me explain it to you anyway, and then we can discuss it together. A long, long time ago, our ancestors didn't walk on two legs like we do today, they moved on all fours, just like many animals do. But over time, something changed. They stood up, became bipedal, walking upright on two legs. And you know what? That changed a lot more than just how they moved. One of the biggest changes was in breathing. When they walked on all fours, their breathing was more restricted, linked closely to their movements. But standing up freed their breath allowing them to control it better, which is very important for speaking. Imagine trying to talk while running. Hard, isn't it? But when you control your breath, you can shape your words clearly. But how does simply becoming bipedal enable them to speak? Is that all they needed no. to speak? Another thing that changed was the larynx, or the voice box. In our distant ancestors, it was positioned high in the throat, limiting the range of sounds they could make. But when they started walking upright, something curious happened. The larynx lowered. This change gave humans the ability to produce a wider variety of sounds, which is crucial for speech. And then there were the teeth. If you look at the teeth of early ancestors, you'd notice something interesting. They slanted outward, but over time, Human teeth became upright, allowing for better articulation of sounds. Just try saying T without your teeth in the right position. It wouldn't be easy, would it? Oh, and let's not forget the tongue. Our early ancestors had tongues that were less flexible. But over time, our tongues became more maneuverable, allowing us to produce complex sounds and even subtle differences between words. Without this flexibility, we wouldn't be able to speak as clearly as we do today. So, according to this theory, all these physical changes, our breath control, the lowered larynx, the upright teeth, and the flexible tongue, made human speech possible. But Salma and Faris, my dears, just because these changes happened doesn't mean they alone created language. Language is much more than just sounds. It's about meaning, culture, and thought. So, Grandpa, while searching the Internet, I came across the social interaction theory, the tool-making theory, and the genetic source theory. Will you please explain them to us briefly? Please, please. I know you are tired. 
Ah, you little curious angel, you've made me talk for so long today. I'm extremely tired, but since you're so eager to learn, I'll briefly explain three more theories before we end our discussion. First, there's the social interaction theory. Some call it the Yo-He-Ho theory. This idea suggests that language developed because early humans needed to communicate while working together, especially in tasks like hunting or building shelters. When people coordinated their efforts, they likely used simple sounds and gestures that evolved into language. Then we have the tool-making theory. This one is interesting because scientists found that the part of the brain used for making tools is closely linked to speech. Early humans who crafted tools needed fine motor skills, and as their brains developed for tool making, their ability to form complex speech might have followed. Lastly, there's the genetic source theory. This theory suggests that humans experienced a genetic mutation which made it possible for them to be simply born with an innate ability for language, something unique to us. Unlike animals, we don't just make sounds for survival. We think, reason, and create words. This theory hints at a built-in language ability passed down through our genes. And that, my dear, brings our discussion on the origin of language to an end. Nobody truly knows where all languages came from, but as a Muslim, I firmly believe that Allah made it possible for Adam to know the names of all things. Now, go let your old grandpa rest. <laughs>